Welcome to the Stephen School Alchemy YouTube channel. What is Hermetic Alchemy? Hermit, Hermetic Alchemy Science in particular. Welcome to the Stephen School Alchemy YouTube channel. I am your host, Stephen School. I hope to earn your subscription today. Hermetic Alchemy Science is the topic. I'm going to go over some things here today. First of all, under this umbrella, Hermetic Alchemy Science. People have a lot of questions. I started publishing on the Acid Path of Alchemy in 2012. Since then, a lot of other people have begun publishing on it too, which has arisen a lot of questions that they don't all seem to know the answers to. We're going to cover this topic, the Metal Acid Path of Alchemy. One question I noticed people have asked, does it use harsh acids? No, it doesn't. There's people out there uh, uh, saying that it does. The acetate path of alchemy has its name because it uses acetic acid, which is vinegar. Not glacial acetic acid, but just regular, weak vinegar. Vinegar is, you know, white vinegar from the store is very weak. It's not a harsh acid. So because alchemists, and if you read the writings of Theophrastus Paracelsus, he said, the substance the apothecaries do sell. The apothecaries sold vinegar. Vinegar, when reacted with metallic ores, it does a process in alchemy called extraction. It extracts the ore. So the metal acid path of alchemy never used harsh acids. Alchemists and scientists and chemists at different times may have done experiments with harsh acids, but the metal acid path of alchemy involved vinegar and metallic ore. If you check the writings of Michael Sendivogius, he said the life of the metals is in their ore and the fire of smelting is their death. Right there he tells us metallic ores. Okay. Acetate, acetic acid, vinegar. When alchemists used acetic acid to extract from metallic ores like this, this is what it looks like, the container. Metallic ore and just plain old vinegar, no harsh acids. This is called the metal acid path of alchemy. The liquid extracts from the ore Later on, the alchemists decanted the solution, which was a golden water, containing the green lion. Now, this also caused a lot of confusion in alchemy because a golden water, people assumed it was urine. Well, it's not urine. There has been alchemy works with urine, but that is a totally separate. That has nothing to do with the metal acid path of alchemy. Okay, so... Um, extracting the green lion, uh, with, which, according to the writings of Theophrastus Paracelsus, the green lion was known only because of its color. It was known for its green color. Okay, and if you read Flamel, it becomes obvious that when you compare his writings to uh, Sendivogius and Paracelsus, all three of them, it becomes obvious that they're speaking of certain things like iron and sulfur. Iron, you know, iron and sulfur, ores, iron pyrite, iron, iron and sulfur, acetate path, vinegar. Do not try this at home, not for consumption. Maybe toxic. Now, in my work, which has been highly published, I have extracted a green acetate from iron pyrite which I call the Green Lion, my Green Lion of Alchemy, known for its color. Now, here, 
This is a separate part of hermetic alchemy science that people often ask questions about and become confused. They even ask me questions about it. Grr. Rainwater, dew. Uh, there's word, you know, that there's alchemy techniques involving water uh, called the secret water stone of the wise. Interesting. Interesting, isn't it? So, if you read alchemical writings about Gualdus, he was into the Gur, and it was associated with water. In the writings of Gualdus, he supposedly went out in the snow and looked for it in the snow. Other people collected rainwater without letting it touch the ground. Some collected dew, uh, ether ethereal water containing energy from the atmosphere, atmospheric water containing the life force energy, um, uncontaminated by not touching the ground. Okay, so a brief overview of what goes on with the water. The rainwater comes down, the dew comes down to the earth. It goes through putrefaction and forms what the alchemists called gur. Uh, it's a white substance. It looks like a salt. And so it forms over time in water through putrefaction, but there's also a faster way um, of just cooking the water. If you read the writings of Michael Sinabogius, who is New Chemical Light, he is big on water, fire and water, the Seal of Solomon. Let's look at the Seal of Solomon. Very important in alchemy. It's two triangles. A triangle superimposed over an inverted triangle. These are the ancient symbols of water and fire. And these coincide with Michael Sinibogius's New Chemical Light, where he speaks heavily of water and what it is ameliorated by fire. In this scenario, the water is heated in the alchemist's glass. The vapor portion goes over the helm as a pure spirit, purifying it. But the white substance forms in the water through coction as it's being cooked and concentrated down the white substance forms through heat there it is we see it can we see that in the camera get a good look you notice how it melted in heat and cooled it seemed to melt and flow like wax In heat. So this, with the gur over here, the rainwater comes down to the earth from the sky. It soaks into the ground. It sits down there through the winter where it putrefies. It rots. Some people use the term fermentation. The white material develops in the water in this time. In the writings of Sindivogius, he claims in springtime the magnesia is set free. So he's calling the gur the magnesia. Now in springtime, when the ground thaws and the snow melts in the white material that is formed in the ground, and then we see in springtime, the trees turn green, the grass grows and turns green, the flowers begin to bloom, associated with the gur. In the writings of Hermes Trismegistus, he was big on looking for a fertile meadow in springtime and uh, peeling back the mat and taking the sample. He's talking about getting down into the dirt and getting the gur, the salts, the salt material called gur, because he believed it's what brought life to the garden in springtime. It made the flowers bloom. It made the trees blossom with fruit. It made the grass grow. This was formed over the winter through putrefaction of water in the dirt. If you read in his Emerald Tablet, he says, the wind has carried it in its belly, which is water. The earth is its nurse. The earth, where the water becomes gur. 
a white gelatinous mass looking like salt, right? But as we discussed, the alchemists, you see, this is nature. Alchemy is a study and replication of nature. So this is how nature makes grow in the ground. The alchemist reproduces it in his glass. I can do it in a glass outside by letting the water sit for a year or more. Or I can do a faster way in the alchemist's glass with heat. As see the writings of Michael Sendebog, yes, what it is ameliorated by. Now, people have been asking about the wet path and dry path of alchemy. And sometimes they ask people that don't know about these things. But if you study alchemy, it's very clear that the old alchemical manuscripts mention a wet path of alchemy and a dry path of alchemy. Now, in the plant realm, a dry path of alchemy can be seen in this plant work. Here, I have taken the herb lemon balm. I did a dry distillation, a calcination, if you will, a sublimation. I calcined it in this pan. Some people have called this a dry distillation and a sublimation, but it is a calcination. A dry path of alchemy, where heat is used, see the writings of Michael Sendebogius, finding out what, first, what substance we are working upon, and what is ameliorated by. Another example, the dry path of alchemy. Many times I have roasted iron pyrite in cast iron pans like this one. And I do have videos of that on YouTube. And they show that the material goes through all the colors of the peacock's tail, which match the writings of Michael Sendivogius. They go through all various colors, green, blue, red, uh, the purple, very, very glorious to behold, yellow, and resulting in a final fixed red, which no longer changes, no longer affected by fire. And you can see some of that residue here in this pan from roasting it, the red material. Here I have a beaker with my red material that I roasted. This is my red lion, my red king, my red iron pyrite that I have roasted through all the colors of the peacock's tail, resulting in a final fixed red. Iron and sulfur. As I said, do not try this at home. It may be toxic. The fumes from roasting ores are toxic. Not for consumption. Toxic. But you can see here, this is the red material that I got from roasting the iron pray right. Okay, so we've discussed dry path of alchemy technique with plants, with metallic ores. I haven't even gotten into the animal stone yet. We're saving that for a special occasion. Now, we have discussed the dry path of alchemy. Here is the wet path of alchemy. We did start discussing that. We're going to touch on it again. Okay, so, let me grab this extraction vessel here. Here I have my extraction vessel. One of them. One of many. I'm going to take a look. Now, you notice here, I have my iron pyrite down here. 
that I had ground up in a mortar and pestle. In the writings of Theophrastus Paracelsus, he said, as fine as the painters grind the colors. In other words, he was no stranger to hard work, but he put the time in and did his work correctly. This is iron pyrite that I ground by hand. Hand ground. I added my vinegar. Just weak, store-bought white vinegar. Is what I added. Do not try this at home, not for consumption. No harsh acids. You see, some people are claiming the metal acid path of alchemy uh, required harsh acids. That's not true. Vinegar, people make pickles with vinegar. It's not a, it's not a harsh acid. It's a weak... Uh, glacial acetic acid would probably be a harsh acid, but you see, this is just weak store-bought vinegar. The concentration ranges anywhere from 3% acetic acid to 5% acetic acid, and the rest is just distilled water. So, once in a while, I add a little hydrogen peroxide to it. Not much which changes it, it changes the equation from ascetic to parasitic. Which is just slightly different, but still ascetic acid. It's just a different version Notice how this um, co coincides with acetate path, acetic, parasitic, acetic, parasitic. It's like acetic to parasitic reminds me of the words acetic path, acetic, acetate path, acetic, parasitic. Alchemists knew these things, they were smart. Up here. Acetic acid changed to parasitic acid. The wording sounds similar to acetate path. Acetic acetate parasitic acetate path. It'd be interesting to do a root word search on parasitic and see if it actually says acetate path. If the word P or P E R per means path, interesting. So anyway, back to the wet path of alchemy, as we discussed, a dry path of alchemy and a wet path of alchemy. Some people are claiming to be alchemists and they're saying they don't even acknowledge these two. They're saying these don't exist, but they're everywhere in the old alchemical manuscripts. So wet path of alchemy in the Metal acid path. I have here iron pyrite, ground in a mortar and pestle, white vinegar, weak store bought, a tiny bit of hydrogen peroxide, changing the acetic acid to parasitic acid. This weak menstruum gently dissolves and extracts, emitting the seed, as Sendivogius would say into the liquid, which is mostly water. This liquid in here is almost all water, but it's not tap water. Uh, when vinegar, when store-bought vinegar is prepared, it's a tiny bit of acetic acid with a large quantity of distilled water. Distilled water. This is almost all distilled water. And you can see it's extracting from the iron pyrite. Let's take a look. And we get color changes in here too. Look at all that white material that has separated that I can pour off and decant. The first color change seen was black in the earth and then white. The blackness became whiteness separating from the earth. However, up in the water, the color changes up here we're seen yellow. Now, that is important because 
black, white, yellow. And what are the four main colors of alchemy? Black, white, yellow, and red. So in the wet path of alchemy, I've already seen black, white, yellow. And then, as in the writings of Paracelsus, it says after the extractions with vinegar, taking all that vinegar being colored yellow, the kaput mortuary is then roasted, um, calcined in a rever reverberatory oven is what Paracelsus used in his writings, resulting in a material that went through all the colors of the peacock's tail, resulting in a final fixed red. Black, white, yellow, red. The four primary main colors of alchemy. Now, as far as the green lion in alchemy is concerned, if you read the writings of Paracelsus, he says, taking all that vinegar being colored yellow. When this yellow golden water is distilled, which is another word for evaporation, which is leading to coagulation. And when the yellow liquid is coagulated, it reveals the green acetate that you see in my books and videos that we call the green lion, not for consumption. Do not try this at home.